and why it's everything real estate. Once again, my name is Catherine Nantes, I your host. And with me tonight, I have very interesting friends in the real estate business, continuing that topic of young people in real estate, but also focusing on hospitality. Have you wanted to invest in hospitality? Do you think it's hard? Do you know where to start from? Are you afraid? Well, I have young ladies with me tonight that will be taking us through investing in hospitality. And there are more questions we'll be bringing up. I'm very excited about this particular episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me our first guest tonight, Miss Catherine. Oh, she's also Catherine Shinobi. I'm yet to know her better. Please introduce yourself. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Catherine Shinobi. Um, I'm a director at Pro uh, Limited and at Nyange um, Resort and Marina. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, Catherine, and you're welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another young lady, and she happens to be a sibling to Catherine. Interesting, right? Uh, welcome with me, Miss. Uh, your name is confusing, but I'll call you Shinobi. It's Toya? Tayo. Tayo. Yes. <laughs> yes. Please say hi to our hi. viewers. Hi, <laughs> Tayo Shinobi. I'm also a director at Shaw and a director here at Explorer Resort and Marina and Ranch. Yes, as you have heard, today we take a, a drive to the lakeside right out of town, but not too far to the Explorer Resort and Marina. It's a beautiful place, you will agree with me, but more, you need to come and see it. Um, Tayo, your name is interesting. Yes. <laughs> what does it mean? Yes. So my full name is Omo Tayo. Omo Tayo. Your Yoruba name. Wow. wow, wow. Yes. Why Nigeria? Uh, our dad is, is half Nigerian. Okay. Half and, and this year, you know, this year I've been to Nigeria. Nigeria seems to be following me <laughs> everywhere. Tell how does it feel like to be a director, a, a young director, especially taking over from the parents? Uh, how is it when you come into that space? Is it easy? Do you get people questioning your decisions? <laughs> um, I, I'm really enjoying it. I will say I only got involved fairly recently. Okay. Um, I had the title, but as far as getting involved, that was in the last year or two. Mm. Um, I think the title is, is, is intimidating, but I think the responsibilities are fairly simple, mm. um, especially if you have structure and you have support, and I'm lucky enough that my siblings are the other directors. Oh, okay. I report to is my dad. There's, you know, good communication, and we're able to speak very openly and honestly with each other. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, Catherine, uh, how is it working with siblings and, and having your boss as your father? <laughs> It's like an extension of the family, yeah? <laughs> but how is it in the corporate world? Because um, most Ugandan families fear working with their children. Uganda family, the children are taking over. We've been seeing that from our Indian yes. friends. Very rare in, in the traditional mm. Ugandan families. So tell me. Um, we've, it's been very sort of um, organic for us. Okay. Uh, my dad uh, always tried to include us in, uh, like, t let us know what he was doing business wise and uh, including us in what he was doing, taking us to properties and things like that. So we've always kind of had a feel for it or had an idea of what was going on. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. And um, we also just, well, I guess we're lucky, we get on well. I think we're all friends, um, even... <laughs> That's another rare aspect. <laughs> yeah. Very few families are friends to each other, mm. and very few siblings are not killing each other. <laughs> you know? Are you killing each other? <laughs> no. yeah, we, 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 uh, yeah, we're definitely friends. We, we talk to each other, we support each other, 
we argue and we make up like everyone else, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think the fact that we are siblings, the fact that we are family for us is makes things more harmonious. It's you, you, you feel responsible for one another to some extent. Um, has money got to do with the ambiance living, like working together or it's just upbringing? like not killing each other. Is it because there is money in it? Like you come from that settled family or comfortable as the rich love to call it? Or is it just family values and upbringing? I, I think it's, it's our upbringing. Mm -hmm. I think I might be biased, but I think, <laughs> and I, I think they are all very good people. <laughs> Um, and, and just on a more personal note, my siblings are my best friends. Wow. They are the first people I go to regarding everything. Okay. Um, so, and it's always been that way. I mean, between me, I'm the youngest, and our oldest brother is about uh, 17, oh, 12 or 13 years. Okay. Years. Okay. And at, at, at first, that was a huge gap. Mm. He was 13 and I was I had just been born, but now it's very like we just we, we're just kind of. we're just very good friends. Oh, wow! And I think even if we weren't related, we would actually get along. Interesting. I think we all needed to hear that because um, I personally want to also have that for my family. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to have that for my family, for them to grow up together and talking to each other and doing business together. I think that is what's killing our businesses. Because if you don't involve your children, if you're not working together as siblings, then whatever you built is going to come crumbling down. Now, moving on to real estate that everyone is <laughs> waiting for and yearning. I remember your brother, Glenn. Right from, I think he had just left campus when he joined uh, Area Uganda and took over Shoal Group of companies. He was really young and I am glad he's still in the business. <laughs> <laughs> what interested you in joining real estate? Was it just um, a push? Was it your father's dream or, or eventually it became your dream I also? Eventually, <laughs> yeah, eventually it became mind to an extent but also again it's an upbringing thing like when you're the way you the way it was introduced to us the way we were involved so we've never really felt like we weren't a part of mm. those decisions or a part of any property he may acquire he's always included us okay so even if you may have had a point where you weren't super enthusiastic about it mm. you still felt and that you were a part of it and that you had some sort of stake in it. Okay. Yes. So real estate generally was kind of your upbringing, like, a, like how you teach kids how to greet people. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Interesting. So um, I know you, uh, the two of you are more involved in the Explorer Resort and Marina, or is it the whole shawl? Um, me personally, um, it's more a bit here and there. So it's with the with the resorts, but also with our other uh, projects. Yes, Tayo. Is real estate one of the things you're interested in, or were you dragged into it? Or, like she says, she was. It was kind of mixed in upbringing. It's in DNA now. <laughs> Dragged is a strong word. <laughs> um, I would not say I was dragged into it. Yeah. I think, same, upbringing, um, but also I think with this particular property, mm -hmm. seeing it go from how it was as recently as a year ago mm -hmm. to how it is now, mm -hmm. um, kind of showed me that this is something that we can actually do and this is something that... Um, is uh, lucrative. Okay. Um, and just seeing the transformation and, and knowing that like I was involved in that. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, I think my main 
area of involvement with this particular property is photography. Photography. Yes. Who did the deco of this place? The interior design and deco? Because, man, <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> and, and it is so Ugandan. Like, everywhere you look, there is a chop of wood. There is something. Like, like there's a crested crane. There's that. It's traditional and, and, and contemporary and modern and all at the same time. So who did that? <laughs> um, it was a joint effort. Most so, uh, my, my dad has, you know, his vision. And then uh, my brother, who's an architect. Okay. And myself. Mm. So between the three of us, it just sort of... Put everything together. Yeah, especially with the, with the cottages. Okay. Um, we really put our foot in there. Ah. Um, and although the exterior, might, we've been trying to achieve a sort of Tuscan vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, not too like Tuscany, Tuscany, because we're not in Tuscany. Okay. But we still want to have a sense of this is something different. Okay. Not necessarily like cookie cutter or what you would normally see. Mm. Okay. Uh, Tayo, you mentioned the fact that um, you acquired this pro project, uh, this property, and have been involved in its transformation. What, what, how do you come to Werenga? It's Werenga, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, how did you come to Werenga and this particular project? How did it all start? We bought the ranch yeah. in 2006. Okay. We did not buy the resort until... We didn't finish purchasing the resort until earlier this year, actually. Okay. Um, and one of the main things that interested us about this particular area is that it's believed to be where... Um, it's believed to be where... It's supposed to be a sort of cultural site, site for the Maganda. Yeah. Oh, so they, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. um, and then also, you know, our 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 emblem is the, the buffalo. Okay. That's partially because many many years ago there used to be a lot of buffalo in this area. Okay. So our clan mm. uh, is the Mbogo clan. Interesting. Uh, I would love to continue from there, but we are going to take a very brief break. And when we come back, you're going to tell us all about this result. Like, I love the story of, are you saying Chintu was here or something? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a brief break. And when we come back, we are going to delve deeper into investing in hospitality business for real estate developers. Welcome back, my dear viewers. From that very brief break, we continue a discussion on um, investing in real estate. But you know, I got diverted a bit when I saw young people and went into <laughs> that side and seeing how, even as uh, someone running your own business, how you can involve your children in what you do. Now, coming back to this place, yes, Tayo was telling us about how you came to Werenga and why. Mm -hmm. uh, you can continue from there. So how do you finally get the whole place? Um, well, like I said, we, we purchased the resort site earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, and we just <coughs> Completely, completely, really, it's, it's like a completely different place. I think the two pictures of the big four and the videos. Um, yes, okay, yes. Um, I, I think one of the main things it was lacking before was just life. <laughs> it was just a bit, um, it was. <laughs> Oh, for us as a family, this mm -hmm. entire project is a labor of love. What does that mean, Patrick? 
Um, it means that, you know, like, like we said, like, it's not something that you're going to see, like, this huge return right away. Oh, okay. It's a long-term thing, and I think normally when you get into a business, um, especially if you're into a business, you want to see a return quickly. Okay. Um, which, of course, is not necessarily going to be the case here. It could take a while. Um, so, you have to love it, you have to be enthusiastic about it, you have to be um, interested. Okay, so what you're saying, um, when you do two programs, first of all, before we come to this side of the results and all that, please don't forget that part. The ranch, you see, ranch is make money in Uganda? Yeah, we cannot speak for every ranch. <laughs> But um, our <laughs> of us, uh, we have different um, activities. We have an entrance suite, okay, and then on top of that, we have a bar. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, donkey rides, horse rides, um, boat rides, uh -huh. um, and just different things that you know. Mm -hmm. You can also hire hire up a, a space for your wedding reception. Do mm -hmm. you uh, Bagole get to ride the donkeys. <laughs> they don't usually want to, yeah. <laughs> but the donkeys are very friendly. They also, if you feel like petting them, like dogs. Oh, okay. They're very used to dealing with people. We are definitely going there right <laughs> after here. Yeah. We want to see all that. But people make money actually from just donkey and boat cruises. Yes, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not millions <laughs> and millions every mm. weekend. But you're content at least with whatever is coming up? Yes. yes. Okay, what, what keeps you going? Is it also like the resort that it's a labor of love or there you were actually making money? That all started, we bought the, the land as like an investment at the time. And mm. um, my brother was getting married and we thought, let's have it here. So we cleared the place. <laughs> I love that. Your brother is getting married and people hire. You know that people hire venues for yes. marriage. Not like go and buy the land. <laughs> I mean, we don't really have the land. We hadn't, um, we hadn't taken care of it at the time. We just kind of had, it was still in the state that we'd found it. Okay. Um, which was its natural state. Okay. So we thought, oh, you know what? Let's have let's, the wedding here. Yeah, let's so you had the wedding there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's when the initial beautifying of the ranch took place. Okay. And um, after that, we thought, okay, so we have this land. People can, people are willing to come here because mm -hmm. a lot of people came for the reception. And they're like, oh, I want to have my wedding and here. I want to have something, maybe hold a party here, and you're like, okay. So we're like, okay, maybe there's some, we can do something with this. Yeah. And um, so over the years, it's been literally just enthusiasm and mm -hmm. a bit of love. Come, plant trees. Okay. And, and then it, at first, it wasn't even something that we really uh, charged people for, but it's just because we really have to maintain the place maintain, and take care of it. It gives you a reason to maintain it. People <coughs> come and they're like, oh, wow, this is nice. Can we come and mm. we? And so eventually we're like, let's, let's Lock it out. out. Mm. So the lake had nothing to do with that. I mean, that's <laughs> a big bonus. It's a big bonus. Because, you know, we are always charged much higher if there is a lake view. Mm -hmm. So, but in all this conversation, I haven't had the lake mentioned. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's there. <laughs> well, um, I mean, people do enjoy it. Like, uh, because, it's, because it's a ranch, so there's quite a bit of land. So, there's different spots that people may come and be interested in. Someone may say that I want to have my vows. Mm. The lake and I want the lake as a, a backdrop. Do you have pictures of those kind of um, events, um, like yes, like beach kind of events, not the one we are used to with chairs and tents and no. plastic tables, but but the ones where people sit down, you know? Yes, <laughs> and oh, really? Yeah. Camping and Glenn actually had his house by the lake. Sitting down on those? Um, no, they were sort of standing with the lake back and then we all, like sort of in a movie kind of oh. So it's, yeah. it's this beautiful ranch hidden all the way this side. Mm -hmm. uh, how else can one make money 
in a ranch. We are trying to diversify real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone is now building apartments. Yes. So we are getting blocks everywhere. Mm -hmm. We want to show them that there are other things they can invest in, in real estate. So how briefly, maybe outlined, how does one make money in a ranch, uh, on a ranch? Or I think it's important to... And, and then in terms of returns, you may not tell us exactly in uh, figures, but yeah, in terms of returns, mm -hmm. how does one make money in a ranch? What can one do to make money in a ranch? It's important to be um, sort of like observant, um, have a look around what is, what, is, what is special about this place. Okay. Um, what interests you, it may not be your own interest, but what interests do people tend to have? People like bird watching, mm. people like have it coming to have picnics, running around with their kids, mm. a bit of football, you know, um, people like coming to just, you know, socialize, sit around a campfire, mm. uh, people like camping, yeah. there's all kinds of things mm. um, that one can do without necessarily erecting a very big structure. Okay. We also are um, working on having themed nights or themed events. Themed events, nice. So, mm. um, the one we've been talking about most recently is um, a vintage car show. Mm. Um, we've talked about having a dog doggy day where people just bring their, their dogs and dog. they are sporting. Mm. <laughs> um, and and. Just different because there's so much space and there's so much land that you could actually have mm -hmm. several events happening at the same time. And each of them the makes people. sense invest wise. Yes. Ah. Yes. Okay, okay. That's interesting. So what prompted you to expand? Because from what I see you are very comfortable with the ranch. Mm -hmm. Why get more headache, you know? <laughs> Well, um, we found that, uh, for example, um, when we had people hiring uh, maybe a part of the ranch for like their wedding reception or something, mm -hmm. maybe they, were, they wanted um, somewhere they can change, or you know, we want a room so we can spend. I mean, no one. Yeah, so we ended up sort of kind of working with the former management a bit. In okay. That way. It ended up being a bonus for us at the ranch. Mm. And then um, eventually they decided they 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 didn't want to keep. Mm. So for a while we were like, ah, oh, we're not sure we want to, to. It's like having a big compound and the neighbors' kids keep coming to it's play right. in it, and you're like, take it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, eventually, um, we decided, okay, you know what? Let's let's do this, um, and. Yep, see how it, how it goes. How does it complement the ranch? Um, in terms of, before with the ranch, we didn't have like a kitchen, for example. Mm -hmm. If you were coming in, of course, you would bring your own food. So okay. If you were hiring it for a function, you bring your caterers and things like that. Okay. Whereas now, um, we're able to accommodate oh. that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, whether it's on this side or on the ranch side. Mm. Um, so that's been an added bonus for us mm. financially. Okay. Yeah. Tell you said it's the working on this place that changed, yeah, that drew you closer, or can I say made you fall deeper in love with real estate. What exactly happened um, that was not happening the other side? Like you said, this drew you closer yes. to, uh, and, and made you appreciate real yes. estate. What exactly, if you can pinpoint the, um, the, 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 what can I say, the spark of it? Mm. So I think, honestly, mm. seeing uh, the state of uh, this, the resort before. Mm. Um, it wasn't a place that I would personally think to go to. Okay. And it was it, it was it was a bit sad because you have this really prime real estate next to the lake, um, and you know prime real estate for tourists, prime real estate for bird watchers, prime real estate for, for anyone. Okay. Um, and they it, it just didn't seem like they were milking it. Okay. 
And so the only feeding it without milking yeah, it. Right. <laughs> they would, yeah, okay. Right. But to be fair, it wasn't always like it, when it first came about. It the face was more vibrant. And yeah. Other, just over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, but um, when we started having conversations about what we want to do, how you know what direction we want to go in. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I was able to contribute certain ideas as well. So like, I was, I'm very into the environment, and so I was able to pitch that and ah. have us be kind of like an eco resort and uh, focus on sustainability. And that's, I think, the main thing that got me excited. So when I also saw, you know, the fresh coats of paint, the new chairs, I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, we're going somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. Can you believe we've come to the end of the show? <laughs> uh, dear viewers, it's been really, really nice hanging out with you. I'm so sure you've enjoyed uh, the company of these two siblings, uh, the besties. And, and I hope you're picking a leaf. Uh, we will definitely continue uh, in our next episode to talk more about this resort and investing in hospitality. What do you need to do and what do you need to know? Um, for now, from my guests and from my team, see you next time.